YouTube and hello Ninth Age community. This is Charles with Airshade Gaming and I have another Ninth Age Battle Report. This game is a little Buckeye Battles 2020 prep. Uh, I'm not quite playing the list I am playing for Buckeye Battles, but uh, sort of the precursor. Um, what kind of got the juices flowing of the list that I ended up submitting. So we're playing Dawn Assault and Spoils of War, uh, which was um, kind of a good combination, interesting combination. Looking at my opponent's list, he's got a Beast Chieftain on a Raiding Cherry. He's got the good 1-up armor save with the Dust Forge Basalt Infusion combo. He's got a Potion of Strength too, just for, for kicks. Then he's got a Minotaur Warlord. Uh, that's the Army General with Paired Weapons. Aghor's Affliction, Blessed Inscriptions, Obsidian Rock, great build. He's got a Druidism Adept with the Seed of Dark Forest, and then he's got a uh, Shamanism Adept with the Tales of the Void, so uh, decent magic phase too. Uh, he's also got the um, Totem Bear, Greater Totem Bear in the BSP, so that boosts his magic capability too. He's got a 30, he's got two 32 units, uh, 32 Mongrel Herds with the Banner of the Wild Herd, Spears, uh, Full Command, and then he's just got 15 Wild Herns with Musician Shield, um, you know, scoring, bunker, all that jazz. And then he's got eight centaurs with champion musician Lance. The champion's got the black wing totem. He's got 10 minotaurs with the aether icon, full command, and they have the black wing totem on them as well. And then he's got one single razor tusk and two, uh, or razor tusk cherry, and he's got two single razor tusk herds um, to act as chaff and to round out his list. Looking at my Empire Sansal list, I've got an Inquisitor with the Blets of Steel. He's on a horse with light troops, plate armor, shield. He also has the Dust Forge, like the BSB, and he's got the Hammer of Witches. And then my Knight Commander has a horse with plate armor, shield. He's the Army General, and he's got the Talisman Shielding and the Light of the Sansal. Then my Marshal on a horse with paired weapons, uh, wearing plate armor, ha is the battle standard bear for my army. He's got the Basalt Infusion and the Hero's Heart, so he also has a 1-up armor save. And then I've got a Wizard with light armor, Pyromancy, Wizard Master. He's on an Arcane Engine Foresight, and he's got the Alchemist Ally, the Winter Cloak, and the Magical Heirloom. Then I have 15 Electoral Cavalry, who have been upgraded to be Knightly Orders. They're rocking cavalry picks. They got full command, and the unit has the stalker standard. Then I have two things, a six electoral cavalry, um, almost identical. One has a champion, but they both have musicians and great weapons. Then I have two things of five imperial rangers. I have three things of six riders with brakes of pistols. I have 25 flagellants with a champion, and I have a steam tank. This is looking at the Empire Sansa deployment. Um, my opponent got to pick table sides, uh, so I was able to deploy first, and I decided to deploy my whole force. So, um, as you can see, he blocked off um, the one corner where I've got um, pretty much starting here on the left. So, on the left, I've got six of my riders uh, at the top of that hill. Behind them, I have my Inquisitor, who's, you know, this, my opponent does not really have any shooting to speak of, so I was able just to run my Inquisitor on his own. And I, he, I have my uh, 25 flagellants behind my riders. Next to the flagellants, I have my steam tank and I have my wizard master. Uh, behind the wizard master, I have six of the knights uh, with great weapons. Then I have my 15 knights with my BSB and my knight commander in there. And the knights um, get next to the building. And then I have six more knights with uh, great weapons. Um, I wanna say that's the one with the champion on that side. And then I have my two more units of six riders with race pistols. And you can see my scouts are hanging off the board edge because they have not scouted yet. Um, you can see that's where my Knight Commander and my BSB are. Kind of a better pick of them. And again, that's where my Inquisitor and my Wizard are. These are the spells for the game that I chose. Uh, so from Pyromancy, I took Flaming Swords, Enveloping Embers, Cascading Fire, and Pyroclastic Flow. And then I took Altered Sight. Um, to possibly boost my shooting or my close combat capabilities whenever. And I have Ice and Fire uh, bound from the uh, Arcane Engine. These are my opponent spells. So from Shamanism, he took Awaken the Beast and Chilling Howl. From Druidism, he has Healing Waters and Summer Growth. And then those are all the totems he has. So, you know, he's got 
the full set of them, and then he's got a couple, you know, extra Blackwing totems um, on two of the champions from the Centaurs and the Minotaurs. This is my opponent's deployment. So he's uh, his side that he couldn't deploy in was where this Razor Tusk is. So we'll start from the left and go to the right. Uh, he's got a Razor Tusk with its butt on the hill. He's got his eight Centaurs uh, touching the forest in front of one of his 32 mongrels. He's got his uh, single Razor Tusk chariot um, in the forest and his BSB in the forest. And then he has his uh, sh um, shamanism gen, uh, shamanism uh, shaman and his shamanism or his druidism shaman, 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 shaman um, in those wild horns behind the forest. And then he's got his big block of minotaurs with his uh, Minotaur Warlord chilling in the runes next to them. He's got one more pig and behind that pig He's got his uh, other 32 Wildhorn unit and that's my opponent's deployment um, I scout my um, Rangers over here. These guys don't really have a good target this game uh, I figure if they can at least maybe just poke some wounds off those mongrels that could be useful um, Yeah, so that's where I put them um, I guess, I, yeah, I could have chaffed with them, but, yeah, I don't know. I couldn't have really got that close to the Minotaurs this turn anyway, so I was okay with that. Um, and you can see my Vanguards. Um, I've got first turn, so I'm going to be able to kind of do the wraparound that Riders do so very well. And we're going to try and get rid of those pigs and uh, try and work on those Mongol units. So this is Empire Sun turn one. As you can see, the, the riders have done what they've done. They, they're getting up on the, those flanks there, trying to do some good shooting, trying to work on those uh, mongrels, see if they can kill those pigs if possible. I move up my Inquisitor to be behind the wall. Um, you know, I'm thinking if he moves up his Minotaurs, I'll be able to see them. Um, he could charge with the pig, but I think I'll be okay. And then, uh, yeah, the uh, flagellants kind of move up. The steam tank stays foot, it's going to shoot its cannon, and my wizard master moves up just to, you know, be out of range of charges, but be able to try and, you know, get as many things as possible to pyromancy. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. My knights uh, move up into the forest. They're actually, wonderfully, they're seven inches away from the spoils of war on the left there. So I'm going to be able to, uh, whenever I can, move out, grab it, and then you know, get out of there with those guys and get that objective. So, but well, we'll see whenever they can do that. Uh, in the magic phase, I toss an ice and fire at the Minotaurs. Um, my opponent tried to stop it, but he rolled a one, so he, he failed. And um, surprisingly, I do six wounds. Um, I think I got a seven. I did six wounds out of seven hits, which is amazing. And then I uh, couldn't pass any of the armor saves because I did it on the ice version. I'm um, able to get a Cascading Fire off and kill the big uh, pig next to the Minotaurs. That was great. Now I'm not going to have to worry about it chaffing me. And then, oh, sorry about that, folks. Um, whatever, we'll just keep it sideways. I don't care. Um, I do uh, six wounds with all my shooting to these mongrels. And then over here, um, I only able to do two wounds to the pig with all the rider shots. Um, one of them... I think the one that was farther away shot um, because I wanted to try and work on the centaur and they did two wounds and then the ones on the hill shot and they just kind of whiffed. Um, couldn't, couldn't roll another five up. So, um, and I think I had a decent amount of hits. I just, I just couldn't, couldn't get another five. So fortunately that pig lives. So we'll have to deal with it next turn. And speaking of next turn, beast herds turn one. Um, so he does start moving that pig up in a place where it can chaff and just sort of be annoying at this part. Um, really, if anything, making, making me need to deal with it. He also um, moves his minotaurs up. He just, he just moves them six and uh, moves up his mongrels to be flush with the minotaurs. He moves his BSB to sort of kind of look at all the threats on his, um, you know, my right flank, his left flank, and kind of, you know, really none of that shooting can do anything to the BSB. So he's pretty, even the riders with the you know, AP2, you know, with the one or pre-rollable, they're not really going to, they're not going to force wounds through on that guy. 
Uh, and then he just sort of looks with one of his mom rolls at my um, riders on the left there too. It sort of challenged me to figure out what I want to do there. And he just moves up in the middle. Um, that was actually, I'm pretty sure, my turn one magic card. I just sort of stuck that in there. I forgot to take a picture of that. His turn one magic card is Flux card six. He saves two Veil tokens. And this is kind of, kind of the picture of the battlefield. Um, actually, this is next turn, but I, I'm pretty sure I... Oh, never mind. My opponent doesn't do anything in his magic phase, apparently. Um, yeah, which looks like I was able to stop everything I wanted. Um, yeah, he must have had some really bad dice, actually. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that, uh, everybody. Um, so this is actually going into Empire Sonstall turn two. So what I decided to do turn two was I move one of my units of riders to continue picking on the mongrel herd. Um, just because any bodies I can remove is an attack I can remove and could make it easier for my knights to go in there if they wanted to, you know, take less damage. And then in addition to that, um, yeah, they're just a big block of troops and uh, I don't really have a lot of shooting, so I need to get rid of them somehow. Uh, I move up my riders on the left there, one of my units of riders, to just finish off that peg. Um, I'm thinking 12 more shots should be able to take care of it. I wanted to do it with magic, but um, unfortunately I only had one spell that I could toss at it because I wanted to back up and I couldn't back over sideways because the way I put my steam tank. Um, so I was only going to be able to toss a cascading fire at it and I, I didn't want to leave it up to my opponent to be able to stop that one spell or, or that spell roll low and not get it off. So um, I charged my Inquisitor into the Mongrels on the right there. Uh, I figured... You know, I'm going to win combat this turn, and I should be able to tie combat most turns afterwards and just stick around and kind of hold that block in place. Maybe I can get the riders in there another turn to sort of just add some combat res, and then if we can possibly break them, hey, you know, we can get all those points. And also, I needed them to not get in the way of the flagellants because I want the minotaurs to have to go into them and have to deal with them. Otherwise, um, yeah, the the mongrels would be a perfect unit to toss into the flagellants otherwise. Um, during my turn two, I got flex card eight. Uh, it gives me a ton of dice. Maybe cascading fire off in this combat. It just sort of do some extra damage. Wanted to try and, you know, get rid of more models. I think it kills three or something like that. I'm going to Altered Sight off my Steam Tank. I want to try and uh, target his BSB if I can to do some damage to him. I'll be hitting on a, a 3-up now at long range. And then in my Shooting Phase, I'm able to do some more wounds to this unit right here. And uh, yeah, I think I'd you know, just kind of poke some more wounds off, really, um, with the pistol shots. I'm going to kill the pig. Really excited about that. That was good. A little bit of a blurry, blurry picture there. And then in this combat, I, uh, I just kill his champion, but that was fine with me. Uh, he holds, because this guy's general and be a spear nearby. And then he turns the face, so I have a flank on him now. Um, but um, he's facing the riders. So if the riders did want to come in, they would actually be facing a decent amount of attacks. Even if they would lose their um, spear bonus, but the riders would go first anyway, so... And this is what the rest of the field is looking like. Um, so, um, yes, actually, sorry. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. On this side of the field, the centaurs, or actually, no, sorry, the mongrels um, were not that far from the riders. So they decided, and they would have had swift strides, so they um, were going to give them a charge. And so I decided to flee, um, which, is, which is kind of the plan. Um, they flee, go through my knights. Um, knights are fine because they're, you know, fearless with the knight commander. And um, I think he debated about charging with the centaurs, but decided not to and just uh, make it a little bit longer, maybe. Um, I say, I know another thing happened this turn. The minotaurs also charged. Um, they needed a long charge here. Um, I want to say they needed maybe a. 10 on the dice but my opponent decided just to go for it and he makes it um he does take five dts going you know through the room so i was pretty happy about that uh also happy about this i wanted this to happen um 
because I figure if anything, this is just a great way to try and get rid of a bunch of the Minotaur bodies. And I mean, he can blow through this unit one turn, but hey, you know, that's that's fine. <laughs> um, yep, and you can see this is where the, the Marmots kind of flush up with the Centaurs. And then it's going to my opponent's magic phase. He gets flux card eight this turn himself. Uh, he saves two Veil tokens again. And uh, this is kind of just a, a pick of the battlefield. He gets Healing Waters off on his BSB in case the cannon wants to shoot at him again. Um, I did shoot last turn, and I actually missed on a two. Um, he gets Chilling Howl off on my Wizard Master. And then moving into combat, he... Um, this is... I mean, you can see I've removed some models from my back rank from his impact hits. And then, just to make it easier for me to count, I was saying, I was saying let me just toss all my attacks right now. Um, and I, the flagellants do beautiful. They do 15 wounds, um, which is incredible. Brings him down to just, like, two more minotaurs left. They might have actually done more than 15, but it, it was incredible. They, as you know, yeah, they, that's about right, because he had, he was eight, eight models wide with the minotaur warlord. So, yeah, they just go to town, and then, the Minotaurs go to town and they just blow through the rest of the flagellants. Um, the My Inquisitor flees. <laughs> he just, he absolutely whiffs, but thank goodness, thank thank goodness to Suna um, that uh, he gets away. So, um, yeah, he's just, he's fleeing. He, he didn't hit anything with all of his attacks. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> um yeah, and the Minotaurs, I believe, decided to not pursue. And they wanted to reform to have a better arc to see the wizard. Um, so the wizard couldn't just um, kind of slide forward or, or the steam tank go forward or anything. So the steam tank decides, hey, bring it on, Minotaur Warlord. Um, let's do this. So the steam tank goes right uh, to face the Minotaur Warlord, the reigning uh, Minotaurs, hoping just to get rid of those Minotaurs. So... Uh, possibly, possibly even break this guy. That would be pretty sick. Um, yeah, but if any, if he, I mean, because if he sticks around, he'll just keep carving me up, and I don't think I'll do all that damage unless I can maybe get like flaming swords off. Uh, but we'll see. Um, this is what the rest of the Empire Sun Cell turn three is looking like. Uh, move up my knights. I'm kind of feeling a little bit more confident about them at this point. I gave the mongrels like a like an eleven or a twelve on the dice and. The centaurs maybe just need like a nine. Um, kind of feeling like, um, you know, put steady man on myself for just in case. But I'm also just feeling that even if he goes in, you know, I get to go first with my BSB. And I get to go first with my knight commander. And I think they'll kill half the unit. And I, I just don't think he'll really be able to do all that much damage. And we'll just kill the centaurs. So... Um, if the Mongols get in two, that's a little bit more frustrating, but um, just because they have all those ranks. But I, I think it doesn't really help all that much, actually. Because they, they won't they, at that point, they won't provide that much combat for us either because they're in line formation. Um, my Inquisitor does rally, thankfully. And in the magic phase, I'm able to get Enveloping Embers off on this Mongol unit. Uh, I believe I had... Um, I even pretty sure I had uh, Chilling Howl up on my Wizard Master, but even with that, I was able to do enough to cause a panic. Uh, the general was nearby, but the BSB was not, and he just fails the panic test, and they start running, which is very nice. That gives me a little bit more time on this turn to, uh, or this turn and the next turn to sort of make sure that they can't get that objective as much as possible. I mean, he's only down to, what, 15 models? That's not all that much at all. And you can see in the shooting phase, we start picking on them uh, with the riders and the rangers. Only do three wounds, which is not all that good, but that's fine. Uh, I think I had to move my rangers this turn. Um, continually picking on these guys over here with these guys. Um, I did leave them on the hill like a dingus. Uh, I really wanted to get all their shots in at, at like six inches. So unfortunately, those wild, horn, uh, wild horns can charge me. And in combat over here, I am able to wipe out the rest of the Minotaurs. Um, I have to use both my impact hits and my breath weapon. Uh, the Minotaur Warlord does three wounds to me. Uh, then he breaks from combat, which was great. So, I mean, he's on the run. 
this was my turn, so I'm, fortunately he'll you know most likely rally. I mean, he's got the BSV right there. Uh, but the good thing is um, he's just on the run, he's on his own, and I got Pyromancy, so he's a bit of a sitting duck at this point. Uh, moving into my opponent's turn three, he decides to charge the centaurs. Looks like he might actually only need an eight, which again, I'm, I'm not too worried about. Um, yeah, I think he might have still had his razor tusk bonus. Um, so he's going to try that. Uh, he's going to try this long charge here with the wild horns and the, the riders. And then he decides to charge his razor tusk chariot into my inquisitor. He takes one wound going through the rune, which was nice. And he makes it with the wild horns in the sun uh, into the riders, and he he fails with the centaurs into the knights. So, uh, not too bad. Yeah, I was able to deal with that. That's fine. <laughs> um, and you can see he's kind of he just had sort of had to abandon his shamans right now. Um, you know, like they were in the forest for a bit. Now they're in the ruin. Um, yeah, they were. He he really did not like where he. He plays his centaurs this game because um, it sort of blocked his wild horns from just safely being in the forest. And uh, yeah, uh, and fortunately, though, my wizard is all the way behind this building because I was nervous about something going wrong with the steam tank combat and the Minotaur Warlord doing what it does and doing a lot of damage. And I, I feel like I had to put some distance between that. But as, a, as you can see now, I feel like I've put too much distance. So. Uh, my opponent gets uh, flex card three, um, and he gets, uh, I think he saves two veil tokens again. He uh, it doesn't really get all that much magic off that's really impactful. I'm pretty sure he's just been getting Chilling Hollow mostly off on my wizard. Um, he does get um, the, speed, the speed speed charge, these uh, rangers, and it's no problem cleaning them up. Uh, he's able to get the blooded horn totem off uh, this turn, too. Um, and then you can see over here the wild horns um surprisingly only did two wounds i was a little bit surprised about that that they would do more i think i made like a ton of armor saves randomly um which i don't go off the board um he pursues me and we'll probably have to do this again uh in this combat um oh that's right he was able to get uh i think he tried to get awaken beast off for strength i can't remember if i st i think he might have got that off but um as you can see, I'm able to do two wounds, and then after it's all said and done, um, he's only able to do one to me. So, at one up armor save, re-roll him. This is pretty good, let me tell you what. Um, as you can see, his Minotaur Warlord rallied, and this is the end of Beastard's turn three, moving into Empire Sansal turn four. So, I decided to charge my Knights and Centaurs, because why not? Um, nothing's really going to be able to do anything otherwise. And um, I decided that what I wanted to do was, you know, I had to start looking at getting the objectives somewhere. Um, the right side of my battlefield is, you know, kind of got a lot of elements over there. The Minotaur Warlord's still rocking around. So I decided to move my knights onto it on the left side of the field, move my riders up, move my wizard up. My goal is to just cause a panic test on those mongrels because, um, you know, won't be too hard with both shooting and magic and you know he doesn't have any leadership elements over there so they should flee relatively easily and then on my right side of the battlefield i decided that i felt like the inquisitor was going to be able to deal with the chariot on his own so the steam tank just moves over to the right is able to get out of the charge arc of the warlord and my Inquisitor is also out of the charge arc of the Warlord. So that guy's not really going anywhere this next turn. So I didn't really have to worry about him. And again, I wanted to go get those Shaman points, but I figured, you know, it's more important to try and get the objective right now to get these mongrels out of my way. Because then also, if I can do that, I can just turn my knights to look at everything on the right side of the battlefield. Um, in the magic phase, I'm able to get... Uh, I get Altered Sight off first. And then I get Enveloping Embers off, and I'm able to use the Enveloping Embers. It causes a panic test, uh, which is wonderful, and they and the Mongrels fail, and they, they go through the Centaurs. And actually, that maybe it was a shooting. I can't remember. Either way, um, throughout the, either one of the spells, I get the... Because it almost looks like they flee from the, the Riders, so maybe that was in the shooting phase. Um, hmm. Yeah, I can't remember. Either way, 
Mongols flee. That's what's important. And they get sandwiched between the, the rest of the centaurs and the wizards. Um, kind of not quite in the runes yet. And now I'm going to be free to pick up that objective. Um, my Inquisitor must have been a witch on that chariot because he smokes it, uh, which is great. I'm able to do some more wounds on those mongrels. And then my knights in the middle uh, just... They, they, they beat up on the centaurs, but they don't kill them all. And they, they turn to look at the objective in the middle and also look at the you know Minotaur Warlord. Um, because that seems more important than the rest of the centaurs, I figure. I've got pyromancy, and I've also got those riders that can go try and get rid of those centaurs. And who knows, maybe they'll just go off the board. I uh, This is going into Beast Herd's turn four. He decides to charge with his wild horns. I elect just to flee so that he can't go into me and then turn around afterwards. So effectively, this, this unit's pretty much done with the game. A uh, little bit of a blurry picture here. Um, uh, he decides to charge the riders, and I decide to hold. I don't know why I did that. I could have just fleed. I don't know. I think I was worried about going off the board myself. Um, he's only got 10, so I also figured that, I mean, at the worst case... Not like they can do that much damage, and I can stand and shoot. Um, I stand and shoot, I don't do anything, and then he fails the charge. And I'm, his Minotaur Warlord moves to sort of just get in the face of my knights, say, come on, come fight me. And, uh, which is pretty fair, he doesn't have any wounds on him, and he's, you know, fantastic in combat. Uh, There's another good picture, kind of looking at what this side of the battlefield looks like. Um, you know, I've got my Inquisitor still free, I've got... You know, his BSB is going after my other Ranger unit, which is fine. I mean, they're only 90 points. Um, yeah, his, his, both his, both one of his mongrels is fleeing. One of them is, you know, on the objective, so I need to get rid of it next turn. Um, yeah, I was feeling pretty good about how everything's going on right now. Um, uh, my opponent gets flex card seven. Some growth off on these guys. Uh, he's able to get Chilling Howl on my boy. Um, and then this is moving actually um, into uh, Empire Sansa turn five. I, I sort of moved past the moving phase. We'll get to what I did, and it'll be quite obvious in, in a couple seconds. <laughs> um, in the magic, I'm able to get rid of the rest of the centaurs of the Pi Classic Flow, which was just cherry. Uh, look at them tipped over. Um, and then in, you can see in the moving phase, I charged both the Inquisitor and the Knights into the Minotaur Warlord. Figured. Just beat this guy up with combat res. Um, I'm able to get flaming swords off on my Inquisitor. He does two wounds in combat, which was okay. Um, you know, I, trouble is I'm not hitting all that well against him. So I think I only hit it two or three times and then wounded with those. Um, I think I must have only done probably one wound. And I think I had multiple wounds into two. Uh, the Minotaur Warlord goes back and goodness gracious, um, he can only do one wound. Um, that one-up armor safe. <laughs> Really good. He didn't get any lethal strikes or anything, so that was really fortunate for me. Uh, we're able to break that dude with combat res because we got so much stacked against him. And we uh, pursue him, over run him down. Um, don't, get, don't get into the mongrels, but as you can see, the steam tank and the knights have started a fight against the mongrels. Steam tank does a wonderful job of blowing through a bunch of them. Um, I lose a couple of the knights, but we're able to um, get them to flee. Uh, the knights pursue after them, but can't catch them. And kind of uh, Beast Herd's, what, turn five now? He gets so good thrown up. So what it's looking like. Um, kind of just gets chilling howl, uh, I think, on my wizard again. And then, um, yeah, that's... that's that's pretty much it. Um, the game is, you know, really starting to wrap up at this point. Um, his one of his mongrels rallies with the other ones fleeing. I think he regrows it. Um, I'd say I think I stopped chilling Howl because I I knew I wanted to try and kill his wizards. That just be residual card. Um, you can see one of the mongrels flees again to be right there. And then moving in Empire of Sun Salt turn six, I uh, decided to just chaff his BSP with my Inquisitor. Um, Mostly because I, I thought it would just be inter interesting to see what that fight looks like. Um, yeah, the riders are going to try and pick them up, pick some shots. The uh, cannon's going to try and do a couple wounds if can. The, the knights pick up the other objective. My wizard master moves up to scorch the shamans. Um, 
and I I believe I had the writers and that's what happened the writers charge one of the mongrel units and that's what made it flee um, they couldn't catch them they, they flee too far actually I think uh, the magic phase cascading fire kills one of the shamans and then I'm able to use a blaze to kill the other shaman which is really dirty I get enveloping embers from that that blaze was from enveloping embers does a, a number to the bigger mongrel unit it flees again doesn't quite go off the board and then uh beast turds turn six last turn of the game the bsb decides to to face on the inquisitor uh look at that beautiful combat going on right there knight's got the objective um this is kind of just showing everything else over here um these guys these guys both rally, I think, or maybe the one that's really small flees again. In this combat, it's a pillow flight. Um, we both have re-rolled the one-up armor save, so my opponent can't do the last wound to me. I don't even poke any wounds on him. I don't get any lethal strikes. And that's it. That's the end of the game. In the end, it ends up being a 20-0 victory for the Empire Sansal. Uh, we got the objective with two objectives uh, and then two spoils to zero for the Beasters and uh, just dominated on points. Uh, you know, I only lost really my Rangers and one of my Rider units, so that was pretty good. Um, thank you to my opponent for a fun game. Um, uh, and uh, I think this was, you know, both good test game for both of us. Um, we we're both going to Buckeye Battles this weekend. And uh, you can kind of see how kind of where my list, uh, you know, changed after this. I wanted more scoring. I wanted a little bit different shooting and uh, decided to wanted a prelate instead of the wizard cart. And my opponent sort of um, just sort of moved around some of his um, kind of points, especially in like special and everything to get a little more centaurs. I think he had a gargoyles, which is nice, too. I like gargoyles and he's got good miniatures for him, too. Uh, so yeah, I'm um, looking forward to Buckeye Battles. Um, can't wait. Uh, thank everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a good one.